Our first honoree is being recognized tonight for his invention of the EEPROM, the Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, a groundbreaking invention that promoted the rapid development of computer systems. In the late 1960s, several conceptual ideas and laboratory demonstrations arose in pursuit of creating semiconductor non-volatile memories. None of those devices found commercial success. Soon after Intel Corporation was formed, Duff Froman joined the new company to work on, guess what? The development of a semiconductor non-volatile memory. Initially, Duff's work focused on the use of charge storage in a film of silicon nitride. Duff soon discovered that there were major trade-offs between the data retention time and write speed that left little room for a successful engineering compromise. He shifted his work to exploring a mysterious gate charging phenomena in MOS transistors. By constructing floating gates buried in silicon oxide, he was able to demonstrate very long retention times and to understand the underlying physics. With this understanding of the physics of the new floating gate device, he went on to develop the EEPROM and introduced it at the 1971 IEEE Solid State Circuits Conference. Previous read-only memory chips were programmed at a great expense in a remote factory with long lead times. Intel's new 1702 EEPROM ushered in a revolution in how computer systems were prototyped, dramatically reducing the time it took designers and software developers to perfect their systems. Intel's co-founder Gordon Moore called it, quote, as important in the development of the microcomputer industry as the microprocessor itself. For many years, EEPROMs were a very important product in Intel's history, generating a major fraction of the company's profit. There's a little known fact that Intel may not have survived to transform into a microprocessor company had it not been the, for the EEPROM. At one point in the history of the EEPROM uh, of Intel, the EEPROM contributed more than 130% of Intel's total profits. Modern flash memory can trace its history directly back to Dove's floating gate device. <clears throat> E-squared PROMs, NOR, and NAND flash memory are all direct descendants of the EEPROM. Today, Intel solid state drives, which just achieved uh, its first billion dollar uh, quarterly revenue, based upon non-volatile semiconductor memory using floating gate storage, is ushering in a revolution in data centers and promoting rapid development in computing systems, much like its ancestor, the EEPROM, did four plus decades ago. Tonight, we honor Dove and present a short film of his contributions to computing. I was born in Amsterdam and when the Germans started invading uh, Holland, my parents uh, gave me to, uh, to the underground. I, I went into a, uh, into a family that had uh, four kids, two daughters and two sons. I was uh, basically hiding there uh, all this period of time while the Germans were doing searches and stuff like that. After the war, the, the Jewish Brigade decided to uh, get me out of Holland. They tore me out of a, of a family that I, uh, that I knew, that I enjoyed. That, and so uh, it was a very hard transition. Then in 1949, I think, we took the boat to, uh, to Israel. When I went to Technion, uh, I, I studied electrical engineering. When I graduated, I started looking for, before I graduated, I started looking for, uh, for places to go to and uh, got uh, intrigued by Berkeley. There was a free speech movement, there was People's Park. Uh, yeah, these are things that really uh, impact on you for a long time. The EEPROM really was the first manufacturable and saleable non-volatile device that uh, you could program electrically and then 
uh, take the power off the device and the uh, storage, uh, the stored information will stay there. I had to sell it myself to go to customers and convince them that uh, the charge will stay there for a long time. That was really a, a breakthrough, a, a major breakthrough for Intel because this was a product that opened up a whole gamut of uh, interest. And Intel basically made a lot of money on it. My, my love of Africa was started in Berkeley. I went to, uh, to teach at uh, University of Science and Technology in Ghana, in Kumbas, Kumasi. When I was about to, uh, to leave Ghana, I went back to, to Intel. And, uh, and then I started convincing everybody that uh, it would be a good idea to set up a development center in Israel. Yeah, and we set up Intel Israel in July 74. Intel Israel is really was in many ways a founder of the Israeli high-tech industry. Right now, what I can tell you for uh, as a positive is uh, for the next generation is education, education, education. Less work, 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 and uh, yeah, and, and let's let's uh, listen to the important people in the past that already told us all we need to know, and we just ignore them. The 2018 Computer History Museum Fellow Award is presented to Dove Froman for the invention of the first commercial erasable programmable read-only memory, the EEPROM, which enabled rapid development of microprocessor-based system. Please join me in, wel in welcoming Dove to the stage. Thank you very much for this award. I really appreciate it. And uh, in return, I'll tell you two, two anecdotes from the first days of an EEPROM. First one was when we had the concept all firmed up. We is uh, basically Les Vadez, who is here and was my boss at the time, and myself. Uh, we decided we needed a uh, management meeting to decide what to do with the, pro with the, with the concept. And uh, I brought a, uh, a kludge of 16 TO5 cans. And most of you know what TO5 cans are, but they would be ridiculous today as a demonstration. In fact, I would be thrown out of the room this is a TO5 can to whoever can see that far. But we had 16 of those with lights. And when we programmed, the light would come on. And when we erased all of the 16 bits, they all went off. And that was our uh, demo. <laughs> and uh, based on that demo, I had the audacity of uh, proposing that we go ahead <laughs> and develop a 2048-bit uh, electrically programmable and erasable memory. And there was complete quiet in the room, <laughs> a lot of skepticism, and everybody turned back to Gordon Moore, who was sitting in the corner, <laughs> very quiet. And when everybody looked at him, inimitably to Gordon, he took a few seconds to think about it, and he said, let's do it. <laughs> the second anecdote is uh, a bit later when we had the product. It was a 1601. <laughs> it was working. <laughs> And uh, uh, I was 
a little bit concerned. In fact, I, wanted, I was going in the hall in Mountain View in the facility, and uh, I encountered uh, Bob Noyce. Bob Noyce, in, order, in addition to all his other superlatives, was a people person. And so he looked at me and he said, Dov, you look very preoccupied this morning. What is the matter? And I said, uh, well, yeah, I, I have, there is a problem because uh, we have this product. We can erase it with x-rays, but it's not a very reliable method. And it occurred to me that it would be much better to do it with ultraviolet light. But in order to do it with ultraviolet light, we have to put a quartz lid on the package, which would mean that all the production people as a group will come and uh, basically throw me out of the building. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bob looked at me and he says, why not? And uh, this has been a motto to my life since then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't lose any time. I went, went immediately to Andy's office, was then uh, director of operations, and of course in charge of production. And uh, uh, Andy used to say that uh, the problem with Dove is that if you don't let him through the door, he will come through the window. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I didn't come through the window, but I waited patiently, and I went into his office and said, uh, we, that's what we need to do in order to make the product viable. And when I sensed that he was about to throw me out of the office, I said, in the last minute, I said, but I talked to Bob Noyes, and he, th he thought it was not a bad idea. <laughs> and so, uh, of course, the result was the 1702 with the quartz window that Intel, that Intel sold for four years making this product until, of course, there, was, there were advancement, and so, the rest, of, of course, is uh, history. And again, I thank you very much. <laughs>